So uh, I'm here this uh, this afternoon with the extremely talented Mr. Jamie Chambers, uh, actor, stunt performer, and now producer as well. So we'll, we'll we'll get on to all that in time. But start with bro, how are you doing? You all right? Very well, John. How are you? I'm okay, man. How have you been keeping uh, sane during the uh, the lockdown madness? How have you been using your time? <laughs> in the, in the most positive way I can say it, um, it it came at like a good time as much as a pandemic can like yeah, I, I had so much stuff I wanted to do that it, work gets in the way and you're here there and everywhere so I just made this huge list and like I've got lists like this just everywhere so yeah I've just been keeping as busy as possible um I think I told you last week I smashed my head open with a bow staff um oh. built a um I've helped build a log cabin um I'm learning languages so um, I'm keeping nice and sane, um, which is the best way, and um, trying to make people smile as well, which is, you know, a really good thing. Oh yeah, man, that, absolutely. And um, I look forward to the, the, the finished product of the video that you're putting together. By the mm. way, I'll talk to you about that afterwards. Your lists Definitely. make me laugh, mate. I have to. I live by lists. I saw a quote yeah. on Facebook, and I've laughed about it, mate. It says the biggest lie that I tell to myself, and I quote. I don't need to write this down. I can remember. <laughs> exactly that. I, I used to do it on my phone. I used to, I think, oh, right, I'll join the 21st century. I'll put a Samsung list together. It'll be fine. And then that list leaves your phone. It goes into your memory and then you never do it again. So now it's like lists everywhere, post-its. Like my, my, um, my studio is just like color coordinated post-its everywhere. Do this, do that. You know? <laughs> It's the only, it's, honestly, it's the only way I function. I have a diary where I physically write everything down. Yeah. And like you say, just post its and things. It's, uh, yeah. It's, I'm it's, showing my age at this point now, John. <laughs> I, I've had too many blows to the brain, Jamie. I'm, you know, I've probably got, I think I've got 10 years on you as well, bro. So it gets worse. I'm sorry. Just keep up those lists, though. They're, they're the key, mate. They're the key. <laughs> right then, buddy. So uh, let's start with acting. So, how did you get into acting uh like was it a childhood dream was it something you sort of fell into or considered at a later date and uh what sort of path did you take to start with okay um so it was always something growing up being uh wanting to go down the performance route it was always something that i uh, aspired to i i grew up on arnold schwarzenegger films so you know commando predator kindergarten cop last action hero um, it was always one of those things where throwing yourself off things, blowing things up was always like high up there on the things you wanted to achieve. Um, as I went through education, um, got more and more into sport, um, ended up going down a football route for a long time. Um, and then I'll condense it right down. Um, my coaching career got to the point where I was head goalkeeper coach at Brentford. Um, it, 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 was, it was going well. Um, but, I found that I hated it. I was I was pushing people into a career that I was no longer doing. Um, I, I, I had things with colleagues that wasn't particularly great and just wasn't in a good headspace. So um, it was 10 years ago this December, um, like December 22nd, and I'm watching Transporter. Um, it's, it's the scene where Statham's running through um, the bus garage and you've got this massive fight sequence going on with steel pipes and glass being smashed. And then it gets to this open area and he knocks all the motor oil on the floor yeah, and puts awesome. the plastic clips on his feet. And it's like this, this mix of ballet mixed with like brutal action sequence. And it was a penny drop moment for me where I went, you know what, I'm going to go and do that. And I phoned up work and I said, this is my notice. I'm not coming back. Um, appreciate everything. but I've got um I've got a new plan now, I've got a new direction. Um so I quit my job December twenty second, um, spent Christmas as like my um my notice period and made a free profile on uh, a website, Star Now I think it was. And I had a job within two weeks, which was it, it was right place, right time. Um I must have looked just enough like what they were looking for. Um it was a drug awareness video where uh, it was about dual addiction and 
I met this this lovely guy who's had a truly horrendous life um struggling with addiction and stuff like that and he told me his life story I'm sort of sitting there completely flabbergasted completely uh, unable to sort of like take in all this information and then um the director went right Jay uh you're gonna deliver that to camera now (laughs) it was like okay so decent amount of pressure but um from that moment I was hooked um it took me a couple of years when I did some formal training, uh, studied Meisner technique, and it, it was finding bits that worked for me and not necessarily being fully down one method of acting or one way of doing things and really sort of building my own pathway. And yeah, it was like I'd started with the idea when I was very young and then meandered my way through and then 22, 21, 22 years old, like, okay, I need to jump into this and go for it because I mean, pretty much the same as you, I don't deal with regret. I'm not, I'm not good with regret at all. That's not something I'm a fan of. So wherever possible, I either need to do it and fail and get it wrong and know that, all right, that might not work or I need to work on that or that, all right, this is great. This works. And then I go for it. So yeah, that's, that's the whole 10 years in, that's a tiny okay. little bit. <laughs> That's sound, man. So you said about the, the scene in Transporter being like one of your main influences. It's a wicked scene. And obviously Arnie been a big sort of uh, childhood influence as, as he was for me and I think just about everybody in the last 20 years, couple of generations. But um, So it was the action stuff that attracted you in the first place. But you went straight down the acting route or did you go for the action side of things straight away. I know you've done some stunt work and some training and things like that. So what was your, what was your route in that respect? Or did that come later or? So people, people sort of ask me like, what kind of actor I want to be. And um, Jackie Chan's quote has always sort of stuck with me uh, when people said, are you going to be the next Bruce Lee? And he said, no, I'm going to be the first Jackie Chan. And that for me was something that really stuck. And, I, I I kind of aspire to have the healthy balance between like Gary Oldman and Jason Statham, you know, like yeah. proper character actor, but incredibly skilled, talented. Um, I mean, we, we all know Jason plays Jason in, <laughs> in everything he does. And he, he's awesome at it. Whereas you can watch a film with Gary Oldman and it takes you about 45 minutes before you go, that's Gary Oldman. And, <laughs> you know, so from that perspective, without sounding sort of too in depth about it, um, the acting side is massively important for me. And it's, I will be the guy that sits and read a PDF about a certain acting style, or will sit and watch YouTube videos on emotional depth and all these sort of things. And I'm the weird guy on the train who's practicing voices and dialogues and People will get up and leave and just <laughs> leave. They, they would be sitting next to me and then they're gone. So, yeah, I, it's the acting process first. But at the same time, action movies has always been at the heart of it's my guilty pleasure. Like, I, I will Nothing sit. Nothing guilty about it, mate. Nothing guilty about that. <laughs> Go on. I will sit and watch any action film. It really doesn't matter. I mean, Fast and Furious franchise is up there as one of my favorite franchises. Um, I mean, that even though they're full blown spy films now, it's it, it, even from the first one, it was action films, explosions, and that's always been near to me. So I went and learned how to, um, I went and picked up kickboxing a couple of years into acting. Um, so I'd done Krav and I'd done Judo beforehand, but that, that doesn't really translate to screen, whereas kickboxing yeah. really does, you know, with the, the punching styles and some of the routines really helped to get into acting. So that was like the the bedding in for the action. Um, I was lucky enough to work with some fantastic armorers who have taken me through firearms and weapon systems and let me play with really big guns, which is nice. <laughs> always fun. Um, so yeah, it's it's having that healthy balance of 100% actor, but the action element is a big part of that. Wow, wow. I mean, on the on the acting side, like I've had uh, literally eight acting lessons, formal acting sessions in my entire nice. life. But I have worked with some really, really good people. There were two, two different instructors. There was a lady called Kate Marlowe, who's a very classically trained actor. Uh, she was, um, uh, she's also a psychologist. She was like the celebrity psychologist on Big Brother's, you know, little... That sounds seriously challenging. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, God damn, get, got your hands full there. And then um, I cha- uh, I've done a few sessions with uh, a guy who's uh, quite a good friend of mine, uh, Jody Lathan, who's a really well-known British character actor. Did uh, he was Lip in Shameless, most likely, uh, most sort of famously, and he's been in EastEnders and Holly Oaks and yeah. uh, Detective George Gently and about a million other things. Um, so, and he's a really, really good instructor. Uh, both of them were. So it's like I've, uh, I've, I've only had a small amount of formal training, but I mean, for me, realistically, it's like uh, the kind of roles I get are like Ninja Number Seven, <laughs> Bike Gang Number, you know, Bike me- Bike Gang Member Number Three. And I you know, know I'm fine with that. I've got, I- I'm like rent a henchman. It's like I'm fine <laughs> with being typecast because I am primarily there for the fight scenes and the action. It's like when I was a kid watching the TV, I was a huge like I, I pray to Bruce Lee at Christmas. You know what I mean? Massive yep. fan, Jackie Chan, and uh, and the rest of it. Now, I never actually want. I always wanted to do movies, but I never wanted to be the star. I always wanted to be like the Bolo Young character, you know, like the cool yep. right hand man. Yeah, yeah. Just says nothing. I'm not, like maybe like three words, like your kung fu is no good, and then we fight for ten minutes. <laughs> and I get that badass like fight scene. That's the kind of thing I've always uh, sort of aspired to. And I'm, you know, I've not had anything as massively featured, but I've had a few roles that are sort of getting up in that. In, in that uh, vicinity, yeah, yeah. which is cool, and I, I'm having fun, which is the main thing. But I, I definitely get back into the act. Go enjoy it. Sorry, Grov. One hundred percent, you got to enjoy it. Oh yeah, man, definitely, definitely. So um, we we've met before. We've met uh, doing uh, fight choreography training sessions with Ray Nicholas, I think originally. So another good mate of mine. Yeah. Just oh mate, just quickly off the point, have you seen Gangs of London? It is spectacular. I absolutely loved it. And then I, I immediately was on the phone to Ray and was going, you didn't tell me about this. <laughs> it, it's just incredible. I mean, the, the production value of it is amazing. The storyline from, from minute one, you're engrossed, which is fantastic. Absolutely captivating, isn't it? Didn't mean to cut you off, but go on. But no, then, no, exactly that. And it's one of those where... I was in two minds because I, I saw the, the trailers and stuff. Um, I mean, a lot of the, the TV shows I watch is like Chicago Fire, um, Elementary, SEAL Team. So a lot, again, a lot of action stuff still. But um, I was like, will will it translate to like the English location? Because a lot of the time it's like Chicago, New York, all that sort of stuff. But they've absolutely smashed it. It's incredible. I honestly think, I'm not just saying this, because uh, like I know Ray... Uh, I know Lee Charles, both of these chaps have been on here and had interviews already, uh, so they're coming out soon. Um, I've uh, worked with quite a lot of the, the, the lads on the stunt teams there. Um, a few of them came and trained with me and Ray a few months ago. Um, quite a few I've worked with on Into the Badlands a couple of years back. So I know a huge portion of the team. Um, and I've, I've never met him in person, um, Duke Poyer. But um, Ray introduced us and we've, we've chatted over Facebook and just sort of bonded over a, an encyclopedic knowledge of 80s Hong Kong <laughs> movies and cinema. So he's, he's obviously a good man. Um, uh, but they've done a spectacular job. But I'm not saying this because like, it's not like you know, me blowing smoke at my mate. I don't do that anyway. But I honestly, it's the first thing I've seen since Game of Thrones where mm. I am literally having to tear myself away from it to go and do like yeah. life. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm thinking about it all the time. <laughs> great series, great series. And binge worthy watching, it really is. Um, I mean, I'm one of the I'm one of the people who has never watched a single episode of Game of Thrones. Um, mostly, mostly because I've got a few good friends who are on it all the way through, and they'd come back from Croatia and places like that, be filming in Dubrovnik, and they tell me everything that happened. I was like. Okay, I'm not, I don't have to watch it now. <laughs> you, you've saved me another sort of eight to 12 hours. Um, like I, I, I get so invested in like uh, Chicago Fire and stuff like that. But um, yeah, Gangs, Gangs of London is it's going to set a new benchmark for quality, definitely. Two episodes in and it did already, you know what I mean? It was like, well, one episode, that first episode, boom, and it's, it's, it's there. So, okay. So what would you describe as your own career highlights acting so far i'll talk about other stuff in a moment but acting wise what would you discuss as your own uh sorry what would you count as your own career highlights and have you had any 
like wow moments where you've gotten to, even if it's only a small part or a walk on or something, and you've gotten to work on a show that you are a fan of, or you've gotten to work with an actor or somebody that you have followed. I've had a couple of those moments and they're fantastic when they happen and they haven't disappointed at all. Anything like that, mate? Any stories like that? Um, so a couple of years back, I was cast to play one of the most vicious hangmen in history, a guy called Robert Evans. Um, this, this guy got hangings wrong on purpose. It, it was part of his shtick because uh, hangings were still like a public thing. Um, so it's on a, a show called Dark Angel, which is with Joanna Froggart and Alan Armstrong. And they're, 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 Alan Armstrong is the most down-to-earth guy. Because um, I've seen him on like, uh, um, uh, is it uh, Old Dogs and, um, no, New Tricks, that's it. I, mm. I'd get part of the phrase, right? Um, I've always watched Alan on that. And Joanna's a fantastic character actress. And for me, it was one of those moments where I was like, can I can I keep up with this? Can I can I match this? Um, which was awesome. I mean, Alan, I, I I don't smoke, but I would go outside and be sat chatting with Alan while he chain smoked through twenty cigarettes at a time. But just to glean little bits, so that was really sort of like a, a fantastic TV moment. Um, the same with Taboo. Um, I was I was on Taboo for a couple of months, and as much as Tom's lovely. He's a, he's a great guy. I love um, the amount of effort and determination that he has to get things the way he wants them. Him and Chips put a great series together. But for me, one of the moments was um, sat in the makeup chair and they had to cover up all my tribal tattoos and stuff. And um, I sort of doze in and out when I'm getting makeup on. I just sort of like zone out. And uh, I looked over to one side and this guy had appeared next to me, long black hair tattoos everywhere and I was like I know you and I was I couldn't I couldn't work it out and then I sort of zoned back out again I looked back over and you're Scroobius Pitt and he was like I am nice to meet you and we sort of shook hands and this is a guy whose music I had listened to for about five ten years and like he's a fantastic spoken word artist and like there was a point on Taboo where we're in Tilbury docks and we just sat on the dock me Tom Scroobius Pitt and Stephen Graham and Stephen's genuine lovely guy he can mix between Scouts and London so quick you can never tell which part he is <laughs> and it's um it was just one of those moments where you just sat and it's completely down to earth and you're you're equal parts awestruck and completely chilled and calm and it's that weird kind of like this whole pandemic thing at the moment you don't yeah. know whether to overreact or underreact and but yeah, that was really awesome. And then the other one, I spent six months on the Fury and spending time with John Bernthal, who's an awesome character actor, um, stealing little pearls of wisdom from him every now and again, um, watching Shire perform, and obviously Brad Pitt's the consummate professional. So for me, it was like, just sat on that tank watching these guys um, was awesome. And then straight after Fury, I got flown out to do a bit on Star Wars, which was just awesome. Um, watching Adam Driver perform, he's incredible. Although running around in the desert when it's 56 degrees in the shade and you, <laughs> you're wearing Perspex and rubber, <laughs> trying to keep I, any I sort of like... I Perspex and rubber, Jamie. It's just how I roll. I mean, I'm, I'm accustomed to that. I'm a client that so I can handle that. There, there's no judgment there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate. There's, been, there's been a few and it is every single one of them it was a case of like it, it's more like you don't want to let people down like it's um it's an honor it's a privilege to be in that situation and when, when you've got like all the crew pointing at you the dop's getting ready and suddenly it's on you to deliver and it's like just don't mess this up um get the first one right and then <laughs> enjoy it after so yeah, that, those have been the moments where I've been like, yeah, this is awesome. Well, some great stuff there. I'm, I'm personally jealous of both Star Wars, just because I've been a huge Star Wars fan forever, and also uh, and, and Taboo, because Taboo is one of my favourite series. And then Love speaking it. of character actors, I think Tom Hardy is probably one of the best character actors there is out there. He's pretty yeah. spectacular. And then, yeah, yeah man, that's, 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 that's some very cool stuff. I mean, Tom, I mean, it's got to the point now where Tom's acting without using his face at all now. I mean, when you look at um, Dunkirk and Batman, um, 
it's, how much of Tom can we cover up and he'll still be a fantastic character actor? And it's, it's quite incredible. Um, yeah, across the board, Taboo was great. And he, he's done fantastic work. Well, I can't name a bad thing that Tom's done, to be honest. No, no, no. Um, but what about you? What's, what's your highlight? Bob? My highlight? Wow. Um, been a few. Um, I've... Uh, I had a, I was on the last season of a show called Penny Dreadful on Sky Atlantic. Uh, Ray Nick brought me over on that. Yeah. And I ended up doing fight scenes with uh, Timothy Dalton, James Bond, you know. And also, you know, the, the Green Baron from Flash Gordon, which was, I believe, is his, I said this to Lee, we were discussing the yeah. same thing. And that's his defining role for me. That's cool as hell. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lo- lovely guy. Love that. And um, it was only like a two-second scene. I was basically a vampire. Uh, he was playing the character Sir Malcolm. It was in Dracula's lair at the at the, at the last fight scene of the show, and um, he's shooting vampires with his silver bullets and his pistol. And he runs out, click, and I come ah, in, and he just very quickly sort of pistol whips me with the with the butt of the gun. I like crack, mm. and I spin off camera. Um, but it, what was really nice is you had I had Ray, you had Pete Miles, uh, Peter Dillon, who's another really good guy from uh, Ireland, and. Um, the director himself, um, you know, they were all there and they were all raving about how good the scene had looked. And uh, Tim afterwards, said, Tim, like I know him, Tim, you know, Mr. Doyle came over, he said, you know, thanks for that. He just said, oh, thanks. He said, thanks for that, mate. He said, that was brilliant. He said, look great. And I'm just, thank you, it's cool. You know, and it's like, it's really, it's just kudos. It's like get, getting, getting props from James Bond there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, so that was cool. I got also a fight scene with um, uh, Wes Studi, uh, Magua from Last of the Mohicans, and he was in Heat and he was in Avatar. Yeah. Lo- just loads of cool stuff. And um, he ends up, he, he played a, a Native American Indian slash werewolf character called Kietne. And he ends up uh, in a, I was a, a, a thug in a Zanzibar street fight scene, which I think is the first scene of season three. And um, he ends up stabbing me in the throat. And uh, they, they used that little clip previously on Penny Dreadful. So they got to see me <laughs> stabbed in the throat every week, which my yeah. my ex-partners just loved, to be honest. I'm sure they were tuned in just for that. But, um, so there was that. Um, I got to work on Into the Badlands uh, about two years back. And uh, Pete Miles on that, the stunt coordinator, just always, he was on Penny Dreadful and that. Just one of the nicest, coolest people you can ever meet. Just amazing at his job. Always like a pleasure to work with him. You also had half a Jackie Chan stunt team on that. Uh, Daniel Wu, of course, the lead character in that. He's He's got lots of association with Jackie Chan. He's been in numerous things with him. Yeah. He was in around the world in 80 days with my son the other day and he has a fight scene with him in that. And, um, so... Yeah, and also I've you know I've I've got to say, uh, and this will also bring us nicely on to my next topic of conversation. <laughs> itself. definitely a highlight, uh, which I won't say too much about because it's not out yet. But working with Will's strongest man Eddie Hall on yep. the, um, the Beast when Eddie met Arnie, right? So there's two questions coming here. Arnie asking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, so I can say this much because it's out on IMDb already. So basically, Eddie Hall is making the move over from being world's strongest man to uh, action cinema. And he came down to my gym for part of the documentary and he was training with myself and, more importantly, the main man, Mr. Ray Nicholas. He was like the godfather of action choreography without blowing smoke again. He's just, he knows his stuff. Um, yes. So they worked at our gym and, and we worked in with him. And then there's a, a scene in the movie uh, Basically, without giving too much away, I, I, I get my ass kicked by Eddie, and uh, that was that was quite a, that was that was a great experience in general. So again, also just with it being yourself and Winston and the rest of the Razor Edge crew that I got to meet, Chris Fretwell and Ali and, and everybody, else, lovely, lovely people, thoroughly enjoyed it. So whenever it's a situation like that, it's always sort of half half work, half play. It's not ever a yeah. joke, right? It's just badass. Yeah, we had all my guys on there, Lee. And Carlos, uh, well, two Lees, uh, Myers and um, Ashworth, and then Carlos and Anthony. So all my mm-hmm. guys that I've worked on <clears throat> tons of stuff with. So it really was just, it wasn't work. It was just, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it was getting paid to, to just, you know, have a laugh. Uh, it was great. Um, now, two questions then. 
So obviously you said the whole thing is when Eddie met Arnie, so during the documentary he goes to consult his friend Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, get some advice about how to make that transition. So did you, first first question is, and I'll, I'll give you both now and we'll go back to one at a time. So the first question would be, did you get a chance to meet Arnie? And if so, how awesome was that? And the second question uh, is, you're a producer on that. And how does your experience um, as a working as a producer, you know, compared to your experience on camera? How, how have you found that? So firstly, did you get to meet John, Arnie? Do you like those down first, John? <laughs> yes, me, Arnie. <laughs> um, okay, Arnold, uh, I mean, he's one of the few people where you can say he is fully ingrained in like the public subconscious. You can okay. say, you can say the words Arnold Schwarzenegger to any person on the street and I'd say nine times out of ten they will say either the Terminator or they will know who he is, the governor of California. What and to be that iconic, especially in this day and age where we are so saturated with faces and celebrity and all that sort of thing. So to be that iconic in itself is incredible. Um Arnold for me, like like I said earlier. His films were one of the reasons I got into action films. I mean, watching the sequences in Commando and Predator, they stick with you forever. Like they're, they're iconic. Uh, Terminator 2 is probably in my top five films of all time. It's incredible. I mean, Terminator 1 as well, to be fair. One of the best horror films I've ever seen. Um, so just to be in the same room as Arnold is... He has a presence about him, which is just incredible. Um, the guy is the busiest guy I've ever seen ever in the history of everything. Um, we, we met him at the NEC in Birmingham and we, we grabbed him for as much time as we, we were allowed <laughs> One of the, because he had 400 photos and autographs to do. So <clears throat> to give us just that, that most precious amount of time was we, we appreciated the world out of that because to be in that demand in your late seventies is incredible. And to be relevant still as well. Um, I mean, I, I aspire to be as humble as open and I, I, you, you can't be as iconic as him. That's never going to happen, but certainly, um, to, to have the same sort of personality as him was something because there, there was never a point where um, the team felt like they had to say Mr. Schwarzenegger, even though they did, um, you know, all those sort of things you can, you can tell from the way he is as a person, he doesn't need those airs and graces. And at the same time, it gives you a whole appreciation for just how busy he is and his, his entourage to constantly taking him from one place to the next place. And, you appreciate your time with someone more when you know that that's all you're going to get and you, 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 you make the most of it. So it was awesome. And he still has that presence about him. I mean, the guy is still a unit. He's still, even when he sat down, he's still so broad and so strong and that voice, it's the most iconic voice. So yeah, absolutely blown away. Um, we're, we're, we're incredibly lucky. Wow. Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a wow moment off camera. That's a personal yeah. wow moment. Uh, so the second part of what I was asking, on The Beast, when Eddie met Arnie, you are one of the producers. So uh, I worked with you on that. And again, not blowing smoke, but from my point of view, you were, I mean, we know each other anyway, so it was chilled, but I thought you did a fantastic Ooh. job. And, I uh, saw you know, one of the biggest that. bumps I've ever seen in real life. So... <laughs> <laughs> to see John John Sanchi ragdoll like that was something that you very rarely get to see. So. <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, I think I can talk about this because this particular piece of footage uh, got released by Jerry Do Films as, as a promotional thing already, so it's out there on the internet. So at one point in time, I get thrown um, by Eddie through a, a table in a bar. Um, so the way we filmed it is we were like, you know, we do we do the takeoff where he starts the throw and then we cut and then I run and I hit a trampette and get some velocity and end up going through a couple of tables but in all honesty in one of the takes where he was sort of uh, helping throw he said do you want me to give it a bit I was like yeah yeah give, give me a bit of a lift I pretty much ended up 
you know, airborne anyway. I think he could probably have done that minus the champagne. I think we could have just let that, you know, we could have stayed the champagne. He could have just just gone, go for it, Eddie, go for your life, you know. Physical. With Eddie, there's there's no exaggeration about just how strong the guy is. I mean, it's it's a testament to physical development and that determination to be the world's strongest is is quite incredible. Um, you you do sort of get a whole new appreciation for strength sports when you're in the same room as Eddie because the guy is an incredible shape. It's absolutely amazing, and to be such a lovely guy and to be that strong and to, to have those sort of things all going for you is is incredible. Um, I mean, I, I know I know a lot of videos where you sort of watch the video and go, that can't be real, that can't be right. I mean, that like you think, oh no, that Atlas Stone is like a, a painted balloon or something. But when you see Eddie in real life, you go, oh wow, that's incredible. I mean, I've I have a massive appreciation for strength sports anyway. My brother is um, the strongest man in Essex and second strongest man in London. Wow. Um, so he's he's doing fantastically well in strength sports. So I have a massive appreciation for it. I think it's an incredible feat to be able to do what they do. And for Eddie to be holding that world record and the fact that his movement now into entertainment, I mean, it's going so well. I mean, him as a presenter, he's a fantastic personality to watch. Um, it's really endearing to watch him and Brian Shaw bounce off each other um, on um, the uh, World's Strongest Man show. So from that point of view, I mean, yeah, I, I think definitely he could have put you through into the next room, probably. <laughs> the guy is a unit and you cannot, you cannot get the true appreciation for the size of this guy until you are stored next to him. Um, like, I, I wouldn't describe myself as a small chap, but I look like a child stood next to him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a different league. Uh, and you're, yeah, you're what, a, what a lovely guy. And again, <laughs> There you go. But I mean, I just again, like you said, just just easy, so easy to work with, so relaxed. And that, along with the fact that I obviously knew yourself and Winston and, and, and Ray's a really close friend of mine beforehand, had all my guys on it. And then the other guys on the team, uh, Ben Carrier, the cameraman, and Ali Ferrani, the uh, DOP, and Chris Fretwell, the director, just lovely, lovely people, and everyone else involved as well. Sorry if I, I can't remember. Yeah, I think I think with with Ben Carrier, um, that was demanding to do to do those shots where you're not just also you're not just capturing the action on camera, but you're playing the character through the camera as well. Um, that whole shoot was incredibly demanding on Ben, and I thought he did an awesome job. And for Chris to be able to keep in mind how everything was flowing together and to be able to see it in his head that, right, we've got to capture the POV, then we've got to capture the entrance. There's five different parts to the throws, all those sort of things. I mean, to be that on top of things um, was incredible. Um, I mean, on that note as well, for, for, my, for my two cents, and again, like you say, don't, I don't blow smoke either, but watching Winston work and obviously yourself with the with the, the actual gag as well watching winston lead all these people was i mean you could you could stand back and go oh geez okay and it's it was quite incredible i mean he he is a a born leader anyway um i mean when, when winston speaks people listen um and the guy is incredibly knowledgeable from sort of the best part of 35 years he won't let me say 35, but <laughs> the best the best part of 35 years in the industry um, from since way birth. back. Since, since birth, yeah, he, he, he was just born. <laughs> yeah, essentially, yeah. essentially. <laughs> from, from way back with um, the stuff with uh, Jackie Chan, all the way through to what he's doing now. I mean, he's still an incredible performer in his own right, but definitely a leader amongst men when it comes to getting things done, knowing what he wants, knowing how to do it. And I mean, I couldn't ask for more in a business partner, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, he, he, the fountain of knowledge that he has is incredible. So, I mean, the, the whole shoot in itself, for me, um, I've produced stuff before, but it was, it's always been, I, I have to learn. I have to be doing stuff. I have to be picking up new skills. I, I I won't just sit and watch TV unless I'm told sit and watch this, you know, but kind of like with Gangs of London. But um, yeah, you got to sit and watch that. You got to sit and watch that. Um, I had to um, 
I had to know what was going on behind the camera as much as in front of the camera. So as much as I had, um, without sounding pompous, I had my art form in terms of how I portray characters and working on becoming a character actor and all those sort of things. I mean, I've got a list of about 40 impressions that I've still got to get through before lockdown's finished, you know. But um, the producer side, I had to learn everyone's job. I had to know what everyone's job was and know it almost as well as they know it because then you can trust them just to get on with it you can look over and go yeah that's cool and then you're back on and you're back you're back doing so for me it was a logical step to add to the acting rather than move from one to the other it was like they can both develop at the same time that's awesome man and um this sort of brings me up nicely to sort of the the end of the interview and things then um so Winston, by the way, just uh, he's just had a small part on the new Bond film, Spectre. Um, it, what's it called? That's not, no, he's a Spectre agent, and it's, I have to say that, it's been released. It's uh, No Time to Die or something. That's right, yeah. We'll see that eventually. So he's, he's, he's off doing his thing and still acting and doing his bits of production. So what about for yourself? Are you looking to move more into the production side? Are you looking to keep doing a bit of both, whatever comes? Anything planned? Anything you'd like to do? Any aspirations? Go. Yeah, um, I, I've I've set myself the, the challenge to do both and to carry on with both. Um, I have got um, in the pipeline a fiction film where I'll be playing the lead in that. Um, do you, if you've ever played Call of Duty and you know who Alex Mason is, um, that's the character in one of these films. So that that to play Alex Mason will be pretty awesome. Um, producer, producer wise, um, we've got Let No Man Know, which is the real life story of Tom Molyneux, um, written by Ray Nicholas and Ian Wilson. So that's what I mean. Just you, you know from yourself, like Ray Nicholas can tell a story. He can he can weave a tale. So um, to to translate that from script to screen is going to be incredible. And for it to be a real life story as well, and real life Ben Ben Knuckle boxing in the eighteen hundreds. I mean that. That in itself, without all the stuff about race, slavery, culture, class, it's going to be an incredible film. So that's going to be a huge challenge, um, but thoroughly looking forward to it. Um, that is a spectacular, spectacular uh, film. I, I've known Ray for years and years and years, and um, actually, I, I've read some of the earlier drafts of that script, and they were just off the hook, and that's all I'll say. And that if there's any movie that ever deserves to come to life, that's, that's definitely one of them. Oh, I can't wait for that to materialise as and when in the future that happens. Uh, hopefully, on something, I'll get a chance to work with yourselves again because it was a really cool laugh. Um, and, yeah, um, that is pretty much all that I've, uh, I've lined up in the way of, of, of questions and the like, mate. And it's been, it's been wonderful having you on and, and having a chat, mate. And... Uh, 